welcome to the lobby. GameSpot's weekly hangout every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific right here on GameSpot.com. GDC is in the house, and so is Peter Monu. He's going to be on the show later showing us Got Us. We've got uh, Nathan Vela from Capybara Games here to show off Super Time Force. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to talk to you in a second about that video game, but we've also got uh, Mel Gear Solid Grand Zero is Peter Brown's going to come on for 50 minutes and play the game, so he's probably going to complete it about four times in <laughs> oh, that no. space. We've got news, new releases, and a bunch more, and your chance as well to win a copy of Infamous, a PS4, and a year subscription to PlayStation Plus, and even more prizes. We'll get to that later on. Nathan Vela. That's a lot of prizes. Can, it's I, a, can, I, can I have some? You can, if you do a great job at presenting the Independent Game Festival Awards tomorrow, then I will give you a cup of your own water. That's your water. You that's already your gave water. him one, man. <laughs> Cheers. Epic, epic. That was that worked out really well in my benefit. We'll talk about the IGF later, but you are here with a video game. Uh, yeah, a playable video game. Because Capybara, Ooh. every once in a while, unleash a video game onto the world. We do. We and do. And it usually gets people super interested. This is a video game. I feel like I have been hearing about for donkey's ears. Yeah, we've been we've been making it for a while. It started out kind of slow and steady as a game jam game and then mm. into a little pet project and then into something that we we're kind of working on on the side and then got connected with Microsoft and all of a sudden it became this big crazy running gun time traveling joke filled platformer that uh, that we're just about to release. So for the folks who have never heard of or seen Super Time Force before give me the elevator pitch of how this crazy 2D platformer shooter works. So it's a run and gun, hard as nails platformer where the player is in control of time. So at any point in the game, whether you die or whether you just choose to time out, you can actually enter a kind of VHS scrub mode. Mm. Rewind through time, choose where you want to hop back into the action, pick any of the type of players that you want to pick or play as, uh, and basically play co-op with yourself. So every time you die, uh, and every time you time back in, you get to come back and play alongside your past selves. Mm. And they're actually doing the same thing that they did before. So if you killed an enemy, then died, rewound back, that past life would actually go and still kill that enemy. Yeah, yeah. So you basically, we call it single player co-op. Um, it's kind of like playing with yourself. Mm. Um, and who doesn't like playing with yeah, themselves? Yeah, there's no right way of saying that, it doesn't sound <laughs> crazy. But, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a really super challenging game. We love ourselves some hard games at Cappy. That's, yeah. that's the type of game we like to make. Um, it's chock full of ridiculous time travel and time periods. You get to go across six different time phases from mm. like the Jurassic era all the way through to the post-apocalypse or the, the past future. Mm. Um, and you get to blow a lot of robots up. What the goddamn hell is happening here? Uh, so right now we are in the Atlantis time period. Um, your boss, Commander Pisky, has decided that uh, the fact that Atlantis sunk off the coast of Florida, actually. Okay. Really? Um, yeah, that, that's a little known fact. Um, he decided that bringing Atlantis back would be a great idea. Um, and because Atlantis is, was not actually this mythical place, it was actually just a really cool theme park. Okay. Um, and is this the future or the, the past? It's, or? it's the past. Okay. Uh, this is the, the past got skewed and nobody really knew that, that, that Atlantis was actually a, a theme park, yeah. kind of like, you know, a, a ridiculous space full of fun and games. It's shocking how many things we lose to history. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, that's, that's, yeah. What, that's what this game is about. For us, it's actually a lot about the, being able to make a, a really challenging, a really unique style of running gun platformer that's also full of stupid 80s movie references and and jokes. I mean, we we love us some jokes at the studio, and I mean, this game is a lot of ways a representation of the insanity uh, mm. of Cappy. It's it's been a lot of fun to make. It's been a long time in coming, but the end result is a pretty crazy piece of of platformer insanity. And the fact that you can actually you know, choose from 16 different characters if yep. you manage to unlock all of them. Um, everything from, as you see right now, a uh, totally radical dinosaur riding a skateboard. Is that, uh, his, is that his name? Zachasaurus is his name. Per uh, perfect. This, yep, this is Jeff, Jeff Leopard, the, the <laughs> rocket launcher. You can play as a dolphin named Dolphin Lundgren. Okay, yeah. Uh, there's a, uh, see what a, you did there. <laughs> yep, yep, you can kind of see how you go. There's a, there's a playable piece of crap named Squirty Harry who has a magnum uh, and explodes his own farts. I mean, there's, there's kind of... Uh, Pretty much every dumb joke you can imagine is, is in this game in some way. You can play as Merlin. And because you get to kind of travel through time and save all these characters, yeah. you kind of build up this army of, of players who have very different styles of, of mm. play. There's defensive players, there's very offensive players, there's fast players. Um, and, and you get to choose how you play it. You get to decide if you want to be strategic and pick the perfect 
uh, character to play as for that perfect moment, or you can just mash a lot of buttons and shoot a lot of stuff. And what is happening? Is that Simon L. Jackson or something? Uh, that's Ludon Jim. He's a uh, okay. he's kind of like a Jedi, but not because we don't want to get sued. <laughs> he has a light sword because we don't want to get sword, sued. Light sword, gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah. And again, like he's he is maybe inspired by Samuel L. Jackson, perhaps, but maybe not. Well. Uh, I want to remind the folks home if they've got any questions uh, from Nathan about Super Time Force, please put them in the Twitch chat or the comments, or feel free to tweet us and uh, we'll get them on. I want to ask the first question, which I'm sure people are going to ask, is if you can just reverse time every time you die, how is this game difficult? Is there a limit on, like, is that a light? Yeah, so first of all, you have uh, a limited number of times that you can enter rewind mode. Okay. And you have a limited amount of time per level. You can only exist in each kind of, like, time period or each, each level for 60 seconds. Okay. So as you can see right now, Sean's running out of time. So he's actually going to have to use time rewind to optimize the amount of time he spends. Right. He might have spent a long time fighting against one character, so he can actually add another character in, take out that enemy faster, and then move through the game quicker right. so that time no longer is a problem. And you can even all, you can even all rewind all the way back to the start if you want mm. to. Um, it, it's going to give you a ton of challenges. There's a, a lot of collectibles that you can pick up. There's a whole completionist element. We've also hidden some really fun stuff in the game for speedrunners. Mm. We're huge fans of the speedrun community and, and awesome games done quick and all that kind of stuff. So we tried to cram it as full as possible as, as stuff that we really like as players. And we really think that, that nowadays gamers can kind of tell when the people making the game love the game that they're making. Yeah. We had a ton of fun making this game and really excited to unleash it onto the earth. This, having watched the adventure games or awesome games done quick, those speedrunner folks who are just like incredibly skilled, they know the game so in and out. I feel like as a developer, it'd be a little intimidating to, to try to oh, like gosh. put your game in front of them. These people who just like pick it apart to maximize yep. every little bit. It is the it's probably the best worst thing possible. <laughs> it's I mean it, it, it's amazing seeing people care that much about any product, any any piece of you know creative yeah. culture, and, and to go that deep in it. I mean, we get no work done at the office during that live stream <laughs> show. So uh, while I love when it happens, I don't love the fact that we miss deadlines because yeah, of yeah, yeah. Did you bring them in to like all right? Give this, give this a try, or do you have some pretty ace speedrunners of your own? There is a house? there is a tester at Microsoft named Tyler who hopefully is watching, and he is a, he sends us videos of him speedrunning it, and only Mike Nguyen, who's one of the pixel artists on the game, is better than him. So there's <laughs> he's, there's already people that are like working really hard at becoming the best speedrunners in the studio because it's a hell of a lot of fun, and because we actually put some really cool stuff in the game to uh, to benefit people doing it that way. Cool. And this game seems uh, pretty dense. You've got a lot of stuff going on. Is that the benefit of working on it for as long as you have? Absolutely. It's given us a chance to really uh, like take a really cool, unique game mechanic, explore it as far as we can, make sure that when players play it, we're not leaving anything on the table. Yeah. And it also gives us a chance to like get you know, a ton of amazing chiptunes from our friend 6955, who's a Toronto-based chiptunes artist, one of the like OG chiptune yeah. guys. It gives us a chance to put all of the pixel art love that we have at the studio. I mean, we're a studio that born and raised on, on making cool pixels, yeah. and hopefully people can, can see all of the polish and love we put uh, into it. I've got a bunch of questions here. Uh, Bob Jones 1980 is asking, uh, what platforms is this coming out on? It's coming out on Xbox 360 and Xbox One simultaneously. Awesome. So you're guys working with the guys at Microsoft? We work with Microsoft Studios, and we work with ID at Xbox on the game, both at the same time. It's kind of uh, best of both worlds for us. So how is the ID at Xbox stuff working out? That's, that's kind of like Microsoft's push to sort of uh, get some good indie games Yeah, on I think it's working out great. I mean, I, it's, it's coming together kind of on the fly and all the people there have been fantastic. I'm a huge fan of Chris Charlotte who runs the program. He was the guy who got us to put Super Time Force uh, on Xbox 360 in the first place. And yeah. I've known that guy for a while and I believe in that guy. I think he's doing a great job and I think he's going to continue to make ID that Xbox a better place for all of us. And mm. Having two new consoles selling extremely well, both with self-publishing options for yeah. independent studios, I mean it's a lot of opportunities, man. It's also kind of freaky because we're not we're almost not used to that, but it's uh it's great. It's a really awesome program and uh, we'll be showing off a ton of games today actually at an idea idea at Xbox press event that that, uh, that actually people can come to from seven to nine at, at one loft in San Francisco. Excellent. Yeah, what's it like in, in today's... Do you feel like the stuff that you've done in the past of being one of these studios has been like on the forefront of releasing really interesting games for a number of years now? Do you think you guys have like influenced the way companies like Microsoft and Sony like deal with indies? Um, I think it's more uh, the, co the community as a whole. And also I think it has potentially more to do with the players than it does with the developers. Mm. I think the fact that players consistently ask for these games and are consistently looking for something a little bit different. And maybe they 
you know, had a ton of fun playing Titanfall, but they want to play something a little bit different. So, yeah. you know, there's having those different experiences and having those different opportunities to play quite often some pretty weird ass shit. Yeah, this is pretty um, weird ass shit right here. Yeah, that's it. What is going on? You have a, 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 quite often in the game we throw ridiculous bosses at you and this is a, <laughs> this is a squid octopus with a... Oh no, he's got he, he's, he's <laughs> got a, He's got a six pack wrapper around his neck. What poor guy. Why fight that boss? You know he's just gonna die Wait, soon you kinda, anyways. <laughs> Part of, out of time. part of Super Time Force is about killing things that don't necessarily have to be killed because you <laughs> you kind of don't know any better. So is this a, a, a repeat sort of thing where you, you, you take it out with one dude, reverse time, and then take it Exactly. Another, or... You can actually choose to play it in multiple different ways. You can try to go through with just like a single character, yeah. or you can create almost an army of views to fight a boss. Okay. Uh, I got a question here from Eminem Stranger on Twitch. Is asking uh, when abouts are you going to release? Uh, May or June. Uh, so okay. it's in QA right now. We're going to go through all the testing process, make sure it's a very clean, bug-free game for everyone. Yes. Um, it's kind. Of, we don't have a lot of control over how long that process takes, but we're really aiming for for May or June. So hopefully as soon as possible. If all goes great, May would be awesome. But you know, worst case, it'll be out by by the uh, by summertime. Excellent. Yeah. You guys Very at Copy cool. Bar have got some other stuff in the pipeline as we well? We do. We have on. a game called Below. It's a aesthetically driven roguelike mm. meets exploration game. Uh, music by Jim Guthrie who uh, made the music for Sword and Sorcery. Mm. Um, it's, a, it's almost the antithesis of this game in a way. It's, it's very moody, very atmospheric. It's a single screen kind of dungeon crawler style game with procedurally generated levels and permanent death. Again, it is tough as nails because that's how we roll, um, but we love to make challenging games. And, and below, you're going to be hearing a lot more about that in not so long. So yep. really excited to be working on something like this game and at the same time something that's completely different. And yeah. hopefully, it, hopefully it shows the, the breadth of what the studio can do and hopefully it also shows all the stuff that we love to do. Hmm. And what does that do for office culture? I mean, you got the guys over here as Jean Rambois, like fighting their way through Atlantis in the past and then over here, it's below, like a very single player for sort of very focused. Like it's kind of it's it's ridiculous, but it's super fun. It keeps things really fresh. Everybody gets a chance to like stop making something that's really atmospheric and really light and really intense, and then switch over to something that you're blowing up robots and farting on stuff. Not a lot of '80s movie references in Below. I'm gonna guess. No, there <laughs> will we'll, we'll, we'll definitely find there a was way. Some to moody hide '80s movies. Like that. That's true. Yeah, yeah music. Really, yeah. Intense. Yeah, super <laughs> intense. get Jim Guthrie off the project. Just put a load yeah. of the cure on there instead. <laughs> Nail it. Uh, thanks very much for showing us Super Time Force. Uh, while I have you there, I want to ask you you were taking over responsibility of hosting the Independent Game Festival Awards, which are on tomorrow, I believe. They are. are thanks gonna... for freaking me out. <laughs> it's like this, except Just it'll, over there'll be a hours. teleprompter. And like a couple thousand people or something. Yeah, yeah. but they're all drunk, independent I'm, game that's development. My, everyone out there, <laughs> uh, if you're going to watch the IGF Awards, please drink before. Beforehand. <laughs> that's my that's my request. That's the audience as well as the folks. Uh, oh no, just everyone. Everyone who's watching the GameSpot stream, yep. drink. Everyone who's at the event, drink a little too. Uh, make me look a little bit better. It's always a fun award show, though. It like, is. It's. I can't tell you how excited I am to to get to hand awards to mm. people whose games I loved and who are friends of mine and who have you know inspired us and inspired the entire industry. Yeah. Really, it's. The games that are nominated, even just for the grand prize alone, it shows the breadth of what is available now. Mm. And all like everything from uh, Dominique Pomplamousse, like a musical claymation game made by a single developer, through mm. to something like Don't Starve, which is massive success. Clay is a well-known studio, yeah. and there's there's just so much stuff. I mean, Stanley Parable was an amazing experience. Uh, Device Six is one of my favorite. Mm iPhone games of all time. Uh, like, there's there's just so much out there. And then, can't forget Papers, Please. Uh, that's kind of a, a really, really mm. big game for independent games this year as well. I mean, that's that's just the Grand Pies nominees. All the other categories are just chock full of, of ridiculously amazing and inspiring games. And I think when it comes down to it, uh, I don't really have to do that much other than say a few oh, words. Oh, no, you got to do loads. That's true, you actually. I was trying to make lies. myself feel better. Yeah. Even, but, I have to wear a suit, which is really awkward. Oh, nice. I haven't done that since my wedding. <laughs> I'll be in the audience. Are you hoping? Uh, what kind of heckling do you think <laughs> would be like? Do you want like support heckling? Like, go Nathan, you're doing a great job, or like 
do, do you feed off that antagonism <laughs> if I just like start to insult the way you look? No, you suck, art? fella. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, my my good friend Seth Killian decided that he was going to buy laser pointers for everyone <laughs> oh my. so that they could laser point my nards okay. for the whole show. Right. But I paid him to not do that. Okay, that's, that's kind of in cover. keeping though at the IGF. I remember <laughs> one crowd one about four years ago, and the dude walked up and just read like four lines from Dianetics and walked off the stage again. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I think when Cactus won Nuovo two or three years ago, he just stared at the camera for a solid minute and a half and then walked off. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. But the thing, that, the thing that's very important to me is that like, the IGF is very important. It's, yeah. a, it's actually like, we joke around and I'm going to tell a whole bunch of stupid, probably not funny jokes, mm. but it is very important to us. It had a huge impact on our studio when we won an IGF mobile game way back when. Um, and that's a, that's a big part of why I really wanted to host is to kind of talk about why it is important. And there's, I mean, there's an amazing community. There's so many rad people out there. And, Gotta celebrate that stuff. There's a picture of it uh, getting set up. Uh, at oh the my moment, god, actually. it's so big! <laughs> so this time tomorrow, I'll be full of people. Uh, that that picture is via Kurt Gardner, the amazing video game trailer maker, who has actually made the video parts of the, the IGF and GDCA's. Uh, shout out to Kurt; he's the best. He's helped me out a ton. So the IGF awards uh, precede the uh, Game Developers Conference yep. awards. Host, that are right hosted after by it. the amazing Abby Hep. Oh, she, Abby's doing it. She's oh, doing wonderful. it. Uh, she's like, oh, why? Why not just launch a giant video game like Titanfall and then immediately <laughs> do? An awards hosting job. She's going to be fantastic. I've been talking to her. I, I'm going to. I'm the opening act, and yeah. and then she's kind of the cure. How does that feel in terms of like there is a direct delineation between what indie games were and what sort of the mainstream games are? It feels like that sort of is getting more blurred or becoming less relevant. Oh, yeah. Do you still I, think it's important that the IGF is sort of is, it, is its own thing? Yes, I, th I mean I think it is in a way. I think the fact that the GDCAs are full of independent games is important mm. as well. But I think having the community celebration aspect of the IGF awards is very important because. Yeah. Um, it's very different making a game by yourself. It's it's very challenging to do so, and you don't have a team and a support structure to rely on. So, celebrating the the different effort, almost mm. the the different kind of way that those games are made, and in a lot of cases, the different intentions of those games, yeah, I yeah. think, is very important. Cool. So yeah, I mean, I I'm I'm the biggest IGF fanboy out there. So awesome, Nathan Vallot, Capybara Games. Thank you very much for Real coming pleasure. on the show. Thanks a lot for time for us. Guys. And uh, best of luck tomorrow. Of course, the IGF awards and the GDC awards will both be live streamed on Gamespot.com as they always are. And here's a little teaser of what to look out for tomorrow night. The Game Developers Conference, otherwise known as GDC, is taking place in San Francisco from March 17th to the 21st. It's a gathering for developers where they share their knowledge about the tools and techniques needed to make the games we love to play. GDC celebrates the efforts of game developers all around the world. You are such an inspiring community. Everyone nominated tonight, all of the games in the main competition. Games are what we do, and we do it because we love it. If you don't have a ticket to get to GDC this year, no worries. GameSpot will be bringing you coverage of the show throughout the week, including some live streams you just won't want to miss. Join us live from GDC on Wednesday, March 19th at 2 p.m. Pacific, as former Sega game designer Yu Suzuki will be taking a look back at Shenmue, followed by a talk by Mega Man creator Keiji Inafune at 5 p.m. Then at 6.30, you can see who takes home the coveted Seamus McNally Grand Prize in the IGF and GDC Awards. On Thursday, Lucasfilm Games will star in a classic studio post-mortem, followed by Sean Robertson, animation director of Irrational Games, who will be on hand to talk about creating Bioshock Infinite's Elizabeth. Battlefield 4-level artist Linnea Harrison kicks off Friday to teach us how EA DICE is creating a more dynamic battlefield. And last but not least, Ken Levine of Irrational Games joins GDC to talk about gaming narrative. Catch all this and more live from GDC, only on GameSpot. IGF Awards and GDC Awards live on GameSpot.com tomorrow night. Cannot wait. Peter Brown! What up? It's Brown Town. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Brown Town. I never know whether to go with the Brown Town or mm -hmm. Gordon Freeman impersonator intro. I need to come up with a third one. Chris Waters, what would you say as another introduction for Peter Brown? For Peter Brown? Yeah. Uh, it's the Mayor Beardville sitting down here. Um, uh, let's talk about your policies here in terms of beard maintenance and <laughs> keeping the beard population uh, viable in these harsh economic times. Well, we're going to outlaw shaving for one. <laughs> yep. yep. That's a good yep. start. Yep. Uh, that's about it. That's okay. About it. Yeah. I like your platform. You got my vote. <laughs> Great. Competition time, yo. If you want to win one of these things, I believe it is known as a Sony PlayStation. 
quattro, a four, a quad, if you will, and a copy of Infamous Second Son, Ooh. and also a year subscription to PlayStation Plus. You can do it wow. by filling in a very simple form. Uh, if you go to the link on screen now, gamespot.com forward slash PS4 giveaway, fill in your details there and hit the little checkbox. Uh, you can be in for a chance to win those goodies. We are also giving away a bunch of codes for Strife, the free-to-play MMO, which is currently in beta. So if you want to win one of those, make sure you follow us on Twitter and hashtag GSTheLobby at GameSpot. We'll be giving away 10 of those live on the show right now. However, Peter Brown, you reviewed a video game for GameSpot.com. I do that from time to time. I hear this is like a really, it's like a screen, it's like an interactive screensaver. It's about five minutes long. Yeah, it costs no, thirty bucks. No, yeah, okay. Well, it does cost thirty dollars. Yeah, Metal uh, Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. Yeah, um, uh, uh, the prologue to the Phantom Pain, which is coming out in a couple of years, probably a at while. this stage. Yeah. Um, this is a game uh, which uh, has come under some sort of controversy because people think that you can complete it quickly. But uh, from your review, it sounds like that's not really the way this game is supposed to be. Played. I think it depends. Well, you can. There's no way that you're supposed to play it, right? Mm. Uh, if you go into it just for the story. You may finish it in less than two hours. Mm. Um, I mean, I was able to do that, but at the same time, when you finish the main mission, you unlock other missions, and there's just so much to do and see in the game that that's really where the meat of it is. And that's what I really enjoyed about it. The story was good, but once that ended, that's when I really felt like the game opened up to me. And, uh, but you know, not everyone like, plays games the way I do. But well, I want to see you play a game right now. Yeah, and I'm going to challenge myself to it. collect all of the nine hidden items. Oh my god. Uh, a suit, well, actually, we'll see. Yeah, so this for the folks at home, we're not going to dive into the, the story parts of this game uh, for fear of... Uh, yeah, I'm going to skip those. Well, really, there's only two cutscenes. <laughs> so unless I finish it, which I, I won't do. Um, Speed run. Two cutscenes takes about two hours. Sounds like Hideo Kojima. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the game is only about 10 seconds long. Yeah. Actually. Uh, so uh, David Hayter, of course, not voicing Snake this time around. It is Keeper, Keeper Sutherland. Sutherland. What's yeah. that like? Uh, I think he does a really great job. I mean, Metal Gear has typically had uh, very interesting cutscenes with uh, really over-the-top dialogue. Yeah, you could, and action, and everything. Yeah, and no pun in, intended here, but this is more grounded in reality, if you will. Oh, I know. Nice zero no, that was good. I liked it. The, uh, yeah, Kiefer Sutherland gives a much more natural delivery, and uh, I think it, it really does the game service, because overall it's a much more serious game. Uh, I'm going to skip this intro, because I know I've seen it a thousand times. and I, I it's also think it's play. the cutscene they showed. Action. They released a, a year ago or something. Yeah. Like so first of all, this game looks pretty great. Like the water effects. I'm super into. All right, so I was going to try to collect all the badges, but I seem to have collected all of them. So what I'm going to do oh, is best. I'm just going to go in. That's how good you are. You are coming in hot. There's some uh, Michael Bay action happening there. Danny, when you say you like the water, do you mean the moisture glistening off of Snake's taut buttocks? That is I, exactly what I'm getting at. Yeah, I just wanted to put in the subtext for you viewers at home. Danny, See, they don't know that. what my desktop background is. Yeah. So like, yeah. yeah, okay. I just want to give it some context. So in terms of the action here, is this very yeah. much in the, 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 the sort of form of Metal Gear Solid 4 or is this its own thing? Uh, well, Metal Gear Solid 4, depending on which part of the game you're referring to, uh, you know, like the, the start of that game, there's a lot of action going on around you, you're in the middle of a war. Here you're infiltrating a black site, uh, you know, a military base that's sort of, uh, you know, unofficial. Uh, no one's really acknowledging it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a much less action-oriented game unless you want to make it that way, you know, uh, make it sort of an explosive experience. Because there's all sorts of stuff. You can steal vehicles, you can get a grenade launcher, you can, you know, shoot explosive barrels. Or if you play like me, at least the way I like to play, you can sneak around and shoot guys in the head and make them go to sleep, and they'll never notice you. Is that the slow mo? Oh, not yet. Hold on. Almost. What? I hope the slow mo happens. This TV is so far away. Tired. Go to sleep. Bad work and blame. Okay, he's okay. his gun. That's it's okay. That yeah. usually means he's asleep. <laughs> what I like about the slow mo is that, in, at least in the PlayStation 4 version, you can see like the individual raindrops like slowing down in front of the screen. It looks we'll awesome. Have to I've seen the slow mo happen as well. We'll have to. You'll have to show them at some point. Oh yeah. The demos. Oh, over. of course. Yeah. Uh, it's called reflex mode, and uh, yeah, it basically gives you a last second chance to get out of harm's way. And you said you can turn that and a lot of the other options off if you want to play like super hardcore mode. Yes. Oh, here we go. All right. Look at, the, look at those raindrops. So I have like. 
a couple seconds Shoot, to get this guy. Murdered that oh, guy in the face. Oh, crank in his neck. I know. Yeah. It does make the game a little bit easy when that happens, but it doesn't always happen when you when you expect it. Okay. Uh, sometimes when you have multiple enemies around you that you don't see, and that happens, it's very easy to have four people spot you at once, and you can maybe only take out one at a time. Yeah. And that really just leaves you exposed, and uh, you get shot. Sometimes you die. That's not cool. Uh, yeah. This may be a really weird reference, but when I was sitting down watching you play this game for the past week. I got like a real Project IGI feel from it. Never where played it. Project I'm going in. I'm going in. So good. <laughs> it was one of those games where you had to infiltrate different bases, but it was always fun to like try it one way and then reload that same level and then play it a different uh, way. Ah, it didn't work. Shit. What are you throwing at him? A car. You're I was trying to distract him with a cartridge. Oh, that's definitely going to distract him. <laughs> Ooh, you just <laughs> distracted him right in the mouth. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna blow this barrel up too because slow motion barrel. Oh, boom! That's pretty atypical for a Metal Gear game. <laughs> Would you? I love these little you, records you... that are popping up. Farthest distance sent enemy flying 4.6 meters. Yeah, it tracks. I mean, it'll track how long you spend, cro you know, crouched versus, uh, you know, upright. Uh, can, can, can you drive that cherry, that that cherry picker thing or whatever it was? Forklift. Can you drive that? I don't know if I can drive the forklift. I've never taken that before. You can't. I don't think nope. so. All right, worst game ever. <laughs> Look, I know, I just not as good as Shenmue. That's yeah, exactly. It's, it's on blocks, man. It's not going. I have a general rule: is if you have a forklift in a game, you have to be able to drive it. If not, don't put the forklift in the game because <laughs> it's just like like the world's biggest tease. I did some of that in GTA V. Yeah, just draw, drive up to someone on the freeway and just start lifting <laughs> their car cars. up. Yeah, they like it. Lifting up animals. Uh, if you have any questions for Peter about Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes, uh, feel free to put them in the Twitch chat or the GameSpot comments and I will relay them to you. Uh, uh, this video game is not a full price video game. That is true, correct? That is true. You can pay $30 for a physical or digital next gen version, $30 for the physical, physical current gen, or $20 to download it on PS3 and 360. Uh, the choice is up to you. Oh my god. Or you can not buy it. Or you can not buy it That's at all. also an option. You can and spend the money on whatever you want. Buy some food, donate it to charity, mm -hmm. buy other games. Go on a are... roller coaster. Yeah. Well, yeah, you could do that. I uh, mean, that might, we're not in the $30. Uh, it's probably going to cost you more. Eminem you know, Strange, sorry. Eminem Strangers asked in the Twitch chat, um, how does it compare to the Metal Gear Solid 2 tanker plant in terms of like the level format or like how this mm. game approaches it? Like that sort of. Right. You know, individual section as it were. Well, I mean, I know a lot of people have spent a lot of time in the tanker because it's sort of filled with all these very, uh, you know, different environments, even though they're compact, right? There are a lot of opportunities to play the game in different ways. Mm. Uh, that's very similar here. And, uh, and that's the reason I, you know, I beat the story. I'm gonna die really soon. Can you go in that vehicle? Yes, yeah, so but I'm gonna protect my, myself first. You can um, protect by getting into it. Shut up. <laughs> um, I <sp> <laughs> Yeah, no, I think like the tanker, you can spend a lot of time in here just sort of playing around. And, uh, you know, it's not it's not for everyone. Like, I'm not going to say that, like, there's any one way to play this game. But I know that I just like to just turn it on and, and dick around, as it were. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you're certainly doing that there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Took, take out that guard tower. That is some Michael Bay. Or not, the, uh, do you think there's a significant uh, difference in terms of visuals between this and the, the PlayStation? Uh, or the Xbox 360 version. Okay, so we're yeah, playing this on PS4. We're playing this on PS4. The resolution makes a, definitely makes a difference when you're trying to headshot people. Um, so this is running in 1080. Everything else is 720. Um, but the Xbox One and PS4 versions are both at uh, 60 frames per second. Uh, that said, uh, current gen PS3 and 360 are uh, 720p 30. Yeah. But I spent a lot of time playing the 360 version, and I really didn't mind it. Okay. At first it was jarring, especially during the intro cutscene, because there's a lot of shaky cam going on. Right. And that's true in the main game, but you can also turn shaky cam off if the discrepancies you know, presented by the frame rate bother you. You said at one point, though, it was harder for you to <laughs> hit, like, oh, that is jaw, <laughs> that is unfortunate. <laughs> oh, that oh, wasn't the longest enemy him. sent flying. That was also, is, I'm not sure if this, I, if you think this is a spoiler <laughs> or not, then don't answer the question. Oh, but I, no, wait. There is a character in this game. Who is interesting? That there you is an expect. interesting character. I don't want to spoil. Okay, it. let's not talk about them. I don't want to. I don't. Is it the Cactus it. Avenger who gets <laughs> mad about all the cacti you're murdering? <laughs> I was a cactus, but I'm a man. You said uh, <laughs> when you were playing a couple of days ago that you did find it easier to get headshots on the new yes. ver on the the PS4 version. Yeah, but you know that really only applies when you're at a great distance away. Uh, you know, when you need to do a headshot, I, I, I was able to do it just fine. What if you need to shoot a guy in the butt while he's climbing a ladder? What if I need to blow up that watchtower while he's climbing that tower? That's this is thing? cruel and unusual. 
like how he's just starting to slowly descend. He's like, oh, oh no. Oh, 15 yeah. 15 meters, a new record. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. At Monkey Knight 67 on Twitch has asked, is there a box to hide in? Is there a the orange? Okay, I found no box. Oh. But that said, even after playing this game for you know over a dozen hours, I found things I didn't see in the hours before that. So there could be a box, but I haven't seen it yet. What's in the box? Probably a box. I have. No, no, no. Hideo Kojima is not one for fan service, guys. <laughs> There's no way does it. There's there are there are plenty of little things hidden in this game that will surprise you. Uh, if, for, as serious as it is compared to past Metal Gear games, it still retains that sort of lighthearted. Okay, the attitude. cookies. Yeah. A little bit of an edge there yeah. of reading material you might find inside of uh, barracks. No, there's none of that. <laughs> uh, Kara Bear in Twitter asks, Peter's making this game look easy. Oh, the carnage. Is it, are you good at Metal Gear Solid or is this a, a easy or not difficult game? I've been playing this game for like a week straight. Okay. So. <laughs> but in fairness, you were like unloading clips into a, into two guys there, right. reloading like in the middle of nowhere. Is it is it is it challenging? You're like it's you against a base full of dudes, so. Yeah, the fr when I first started playing this game, I died probably three or four times before I was able to make any progress into the base. Snake can jump, by the way. <laughs> jump like Well, you can't, feet. you can't, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that was falling. Okay. Oh, uh, no! Uh -oh. No! <laughs> I like this effect of, of like, it's almost like you're dissolving an old photograph or something. <laughs> or playing called, oh, oh, you fell, enemy down. Enemy down, Snake. indeed. Snake, Snake, Snake. <laughs> I'm gonna play, I'm gonna do just a little bit more. How much time I got left? Sure, we can play for another couple of minutes, man. It's a pretty good video awesome. game. I agree. I'm kind of into it. I would call it great. Uh, Digital what Game asks, what happened oh. to the poor watermelon? Oh, that was for Metal Gear Rising. Mm, it's yeah, not yeah. in this game. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Yes, Cynthia. This one is all about cactus murder, not yeah. watermelon mutilation. Well. Big difference. Uh, what did you rate this game on, GameSpot.com? I gave it an 8, because I think it's great. It's, it's great! <laughs> You'll murder that guy. Are you going to use him as a hostage while you're in a tower? I don't think that's going to work. Can you shine the spotlight? Can you okay. take off his clothes? <laughs> are there skin? Are there lockers? <laughs> can, you, can you wear skin? He got up. Can you ask him about his family? Can, are there lockers with pictures of half-naked ladies in them? Not that I've found. Danny, okay. I already asked the smut question. Sorry, sorry. Come on. Do it's you, not double you down have on to, smut. Did you have to plug in your controller into a different port? <laughs> no. Oh, let me up the rock. So you're playing this, uh, you know, you're kind of treating this as just like a, a sandbox right now. You're not oh, playing with any particular goal in mind. Well, I but, had a goal in mind, but I screwed up <laughs> pretty poorly, so now I'm just... <laughs> So, like, what are what are some of the different type of mission objectives you might get up to in your replaying of Ground Zeroes? Yeah, well, I mean, your mission objectives don't necessarily change, but, I mean, so there are a lot of side missions that do offer different challenges, right? So the main one, you have to evacuate uh, people that you know that are being held captive on base. Okay. Um, the missions after that, they, they range from, you know, assass assassination uh, missions, uh, you know, there's one where you're in a helicopter and you have to protect a, a covert agent in the base who's trying to escape, and you're armed with a you know a grenade launcher and a rifle. Um, there's another one where you have to contact an agent who is expecting someone, but you're not on his side, so you get the information out of him, and then you have to dispatch him after the fact, mm. after he helped you so kindly. Um, War is cr cruel, man. Yeah. Well, what's really interesting is that you get most of the main story bits from the main mission, but the side ones. Some of the dialogue that the characters uh, uh, deliver, they have like hints of maybe things to come. Okay. Um, is, is this one of these games where you've got more questions about Metal Gear Solid's job? Uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't. Afterwards. Yeah, I mean, so it's a prologue, so obviously it sets up a lot of uh, you know stuff that's going to come in the future. Uh, but it does, also doesn't really explain a whole lot. Ooh, nice work. Thank you. I Peter Brett. <laughs> I love that what a moment. fierce face plant. Yeah. When you hit when you die, you just like yeah. hit the ground. <laughs> Before you go, Peter, uh, I wanna ask you, so this is obviously the prologue for Phantom Pain, yeah. which is coming out, you know, in the distant future perhaps. Yeah. Um Kajima said that the full game will be something like one hundred times bigger uh, than than this. How do you feel about what that game might be and in terms of scale, is this does that mean this game is a small game, or is that just a really big ask that Kojima's saying a hundred times bigger? I think it's it's possible that he can make a game that's geographically that large. Mm. But you know, one thing I learned about this base is that uh, you know there's so many things to do, like I said, and it's so dense with content that I'd be really impressed if they could put a hundred of those yeah. that are different enough in a game and, and ship it 
you know, before the PlayStation 5 came out. Uh, I think you're going to see that it's probably a mix of those two things. It's a really large area because it will be open world. This is more an open format level. Mm. Um, and I think you will find a lot of bases like this. But you'll also have your own base to manage. Uh, you'll be able to recruit soldiers. And obviously the story will be a much more important aspect of the game at large. So I think uh, this is a small game. And it's almost like a, it's like, a, it's like a testing lab, if you will, for the new style of Metal Gear. Cool. Peter Brown, thank you very much for coming on the show. Always. Metal Gear Solid Grand Zeroes, 8.0 on GameSpot.com. You can go check out the review on the site, or we're going to play it after the credits, after the lobby. We'll be back in a minute with new releases, but first, we asked Tim Shea for a question, and he responded. <laughs> Oh, buy real estate in the 90s. I would probably, yeah, all that full throttle money should have gone into that. I would not be here talking to you guys because I couldn't hear you from my private island. Welcome back to the show. Tim Schaefer, we're going to ask a bunch of questions to Peter Molyneux afterwards as well when he yeah. comes on. Yeah, He'll be on with Goddess real soon. But first, did you know that every week... Chris Waters. Okay. New video games appear on the market. Every, Some of the, every week. Every week. On Tuesdays in North America, but on Fridays in Europe usually. They don't take a week off? Unless it's in from the second They're song. not like skipsies Sometimes. every other? Christmas maybe. But most weeks. And we have this someone. Week? This week? I think so. Mary Kish, <gasps> are there new games coming out this week? You're right. There are new games coming out this week. Today, on the day of my birth. Your birthday? It's your it birthday? Is. Today's it your is. birthday. It's my birthday. And I could cry if I wanted to, yeah. but I'm not. Oh my gosh! Oh, but it's <laughs> your birthday! Oh, so I, oh. Happy, happy birthday to you! Happy birthday! It's green! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, birthday, birthday to you! Fantastic! Yeah. Thank you guys. The best part is you thought that we'd forgotten because we no. didn't mention it all day. I never thought. Didn't you guys mention got me any... a green cake on a green screen. I know. <laughs> it just looks orange. It's cool. Thank you guys. You got to blow out your candles. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I wish for ground today. <laughs> I, hope you didn't wish for, I hope you didn't wish for a raise because we spent all that money on the graphic behind you. <laughs> You think it's you, easy to make a cupcake spin? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, you guys. Happy birthday, oh Mary gosh. Kish. Producer of the lobby, you deserve it. Now Yay. tell us about some video games, yo. Well, that's it. I'll see you guys next week. <laughs> that's it. Up. Oh, wait, no, there's still new releases. Okay. So let's get into my first request, Ground <laughs> Zeroes, to come out today. This is so exciting. You guys, I'm... I'm overwhelmed. They've already eaten all the cakes. We're yes, just uh, they're going to eat all the cake while I tell you that it's coming out on PlayStation and Xbox, um, both last gen and current gen. And you can murder cactuses. And it was also my gift that Jack Bauer took the place of David Hayter, yeah. much to many people's dismay. But that he was on 24, so I think you know he had a lot of street cred going Jack for him. Jack is back, baby. Yeah, if you can do 24 hours of murder and madness, I feel like you can you can handle. <laughs> That's longer gear. than that video game is. That's true. Save Chico, uh, and also Final Fantasy the Remaster, where we're -re remix 10 <laughs> and 10 too, uh, 40 to 50 hours of gameplay at least to beat, and uh, Blitzball. In case you guys forgot about how awesome Blitzball was. And J-pop. <laughs> I forgot about the music video aspect of this oh, game. Oh, you yeah. can never get enough J-pop. It's coming out today as well, so you can grab that the same. Same day, today. Uh, and? Meat Slapper. Yaiba. You can't, you gotta have a Meat Slapper. Yaiba, Ninja, Ninja Guy, Z. It's got the shoulder blade and the pocket rocket. Everything, enough to make you laugh and giggle your way through it. Uh, I heard there's some pretty silly jokes spliced throughout. I heard um, there's some pretty crappy jokes spliced <laughs> throughout. Yeah, <laughs> well, it just depends on your level of humor. I like to think that it's right on my alley, which is slapstick humor um, and really bad. Dick jokes. Yes. That sounds like a frightening alley. <laughs> but yeah. Dick joke alley? Yeah. I People don't really there. talk about that alley anymore. This and game's coming out on a Friday in the US. What's that about? Yeah, I don't know. I guess uh, when, when your name is Delson, you get to make your own rules. <laughs> uh, you know, he kind of like doesn't follow you know, anybody else's rules. Kind of like just does whatever he wants. If my uh, first name Delson, was Delson, pretty cool. my first rule would be to rename myself. <laughs> Delson. I know. You I think with all that power, he would have, he would have, con you know, found out the power of getting a different name, not <laughs> Delson. And then I really should mention Vlambeer's new game, 
You uh, should. Left Rousers is coming out today. Same people who brought you Ridiculous Fishing. Uh, it's like a sweet kind of like old school pilot game. It's definitely worth picking up. Um, so I would definitely check that out as awesome. well today. Extras. Luftra. Thank you, so, Thank you very welcome. much, Mary. Thank Happy you guys. birthday. I can't believe, you, honest to God, you don't look a day under 40. It's oh, I thank you. The most important thing is that uh, I can buy beer. So yes. um, after that birthday, they all kind of merge together. Yeah. So. And yeah. to strip you clubs. don't have to buy us beer, Mary. I mean, okay, okay. You, you Danny, can. did you just say you're going to take me to strip clubs? No, you can go to strip clubs now. <laughs> I know all the strip clubs in town. That's why I keep that bag full of ones. They have your name on the short list, don't I'm they? Deeply lonely. Is yeah. that, yeah, make you sure you get in, or is it, that to no, not let you in? No, it's a sign saying stop. We've talked so long, the animation on your happy birthday thing is stuck. It's gone. Mary I gotta Kish, go. go eat some cupcakes. That's it. See ya. You're the best. Bye. New releases, Mary Kish. Uh, we're gonna have, um, we're not gonna have Justin Haywald on, we're gonna have Eddie McCoo, yeah. Boston's own on for news. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. But before that, uh, GDC's in town, and every year uh, the GameSpot crew put together a ridiculous um, post it note collage uh, in our break room. And uh, this year the guys set up a bunch of cameras and recorded the whole thing as a time lapse. So let's check that out, see if you can figure out what the things are before they pop up. Congratulations to everyone who contributed to that. I feel like an asshole because I didn't help and my name's not on that list. Lazy so O'Dwyer. It's a team sport running a video game website. And you know what? Sometimes though, our, our, our folks, they don't, they don't work in teams. They work as individuals mm. and they have their own shows, mm. which is cray cray. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get to that in a second. First of all, I wanna give out some of these Strife beta keys. We have five winners. There's five more to win. Again, if you wanna win, uh, I'll get to that in a second. Names. Vicky Brightside, All right. Maple underscore EU, Europe Woo! represent, Krishna underscore Malady, All right. Jackson to Germain, and, and GameSpot, uh, GameSpot favorite, Sakatume. 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 If you want to win one of those bad boys, make sure you're following us on Twitter and tweet hashtag GS the Lobby. We have five more to give away. Uh, but yes, like I was saying before we gave away that stuff, we have a bunch of live shows on this uh, wonderful website which we showed last week. Uh, we also have a bunch of original programs which can be viewed on demand whenever you want. So let's have a look at some of those shows. Fine day to be a businessman and I don't think you've quite got the point. I look a bit different from you. You said Wolf, right? Eric Tay wanted to be the guy. No. Just, just, no. Stupid reviews. I don't even read them. Games are more like... Sandwiches. How? 
How? We showcased not one or two or three or four, but five months. Last week, we went to space. We did go to space. It was amazing. How? This week, the gist. Five reasons your next purchase should be a 3DS. The waiting game, Dying Light. The point, Irish flavored gaming is on tomorrow. That's actually a way better title than when I was coming up with. Irish GTA Diaries. Gaming. GTA 5 Meta Gaming of Deaths. Feedy Bees with Johnny Chiedini on Friday. Skyrim Mods is going to be about Skyrim. Real Times in Tamriel. And then Reality Check. Metal Gear Solid Tech. Check. One, two, one, two, check. SEO Gold there from Cameron Robinson. Danny, what is a Marty? <laughs> What's a Marty? Yeah. What's a, what is a Marty? It said Marty's miffed about some video game on the uh, feedback. You guys saw oh, really? that, right? Marty, I mean. is that always, oh, it's like is a UK like, slang? Yes, that's what I was asking. I don't know. For your I expertise. I haven't got a clue. You let me down. Can we keep talking over Eddie McCoo so that they can't use the wide shot? Yeah, I can. Hey, what's oh, up? There we go. Hey, <laughs> nice to meet you finally. There we go. East Coast Eddie McCoo. Yeah, from GameSpot Boston. We actually have an office there. Really? We it's do. just you though, right? No, there's uh, like five, ten other people from CNET mostly. Yeah? Yeah. Repping it. You are the creator of basically most of the articles <laughs> on GameSpot.com <laughs> and we never get to hang out. So it is great to have you in town for GDC. Thank you. It's great to be here. There is some news I hear. Some things have happened. Yes, yeah. I, hear, uh, I hear The Sims finally got fixed and so did Diablo in the exact same day. Sim City. Sims? Sim City. Sim City. Sim City. Yeah. You're a real newsman, O'Dwyer. Sim City has an offline mode now. That's yes. the big news for it. Um, Long, long awaited, much requested feature, um, it, as its name suggests, lets you play the game offline, mm. um, which was people have been clamoring for since day one because, you know, you know, the game was terribly, it just had a terrible launch. Yeah. Servers were down, no one could play the game. And then it um, took them, they said in January they're uh, going to eventually make it so that you could play offline. Right. I remember in like the, the week preceding the game's launch, somebody hacked it and basically managed to make a, an offline mode. Right, Maxis had said that you know, it would not be technologically impossible, but they said it would you know, require a ton of engineering expertise and skill. And it sounded like something that they weren't going to do. Yeah. Um, and then when they finally announced it, um, fans are really happy. I mean, we'll see how it's received now, I mean, I can't imagine there'd be ma like any more issues because you can yeah. play offline. Do you really think there's going to be people who are like waiting to purchase it that are now going to get it or is this more service to the people who have already been It's probably just it. fan service. You know, this is something that people had wanted for a long time. So delivering it and trying to win back some of that lost goodwill, I think is going to be helpful for them. Speaking of games being sold, Walmart apparently is getting into the used games trade. Yeah, they are taking GameStop um, head on, which is... Um, oh game my. Big news. GameStop, yeah. you know, they've had a lot of competitors in the past. Target, Best Buy, even Walmart launched a pilot program in 2009. Yeah. But all of them failed. No one can eat away at Games GameStop's market share so far. But Walmart, largest retailer in the world. Mm. Um, they're starting this program. 3,100 stores nationwide, March 26. Trade in your games. Um, all games. No hardware, though. So that's okay. a big a differentiator. Is that is that just for the start, or is that going to be a continuing thing? You know? We talked with a Walmart marketing chief um, on Monday, and he said, um, well, he didn't give any information about that. And he sounded mm. pretty you know, black and white about there's not going to be any hardware involved with this. Um, and uh, GameStop shares are down today, 5%. Oh, really? So The market already. got a little jittery. They're like, yeah, oh, wait, did. Walmart's coming after you. Oh, snap. <laughs> like, I mean, because Walmart is ginormous. Yeah, yeah, like all across the country. Yeah. yeah, and they said, you know, another big differentiator there is you can only get uh, store credit, but Walmart, right, okay. Walmart sells food and clothing, yeah. so you can trade in your games for clothing, which is something or food <laughs> that GameStop cannot offer. We should do a feature um, where we see how many socks we can buy for a copy of Too Human. <laughs> Too Just human. the new games about rating scale is yeah. food is like how many boxes of Cheez Its yeah. you can get for Just Dance Four. Yeah, because then yeah, because then like Metal Gear Solid Grand Zero is because it's only thirty bucks. You won't get as high a rating, you know, because money equals time spent. Yeah, that's video game is. reviews. Okay. Yeah, uh, and then we talked about SimCity. Of course, that was some fan service and the fact that they they made an offline mode for that. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a similar sort of way on the exact same day. Uh, Diablo 3's auction house has finally been removed. Yeah, the real money and the uh, gold auction houses both gone. Um, you know, they were they launched in 2012. They're gone early 2014, so not a lot of time there for it. But they said, I believe it was last GDC, that um, the auction houses undermined um, the core gameplay, and, yes. and that is kill monsters, get loot. So if you could buy things with real money, that was kind of against the spirit of their game. So yeah, in a similar way, they're taking it out as you know a fan service in response to what fans have said. 
And especially after they've patched the game and basically remodeled the entire loot system, or you know, they probably yeah. debased the market mm -hmm. in terms of what was in the auction house anyway, because you could right. kill stuff and get like really good kit that you couldn't before. Yeah, the mm -hmm. folks who've been playing the the, the the update that's gone live to like precede Reaper of Souls have said like in an hour of play, yeah. they've just gotten like way better loot than they did in 30 hours of play earlier on. It's crazy. Yeah. So if you wanted to play SimCity or you wanted to play Diablo and you were holding off, it sounds like now is a bread the right time to head back into it. Andy McCoo, thank you very much for joining us. You're heading back onto the GDC show Happy forward. to be here. Yeah, I'm headed there right now. The panel at 3 o'clock, so I'm running. What panel is it? What panel is it? Oh, second screen apps, or like designing second screen apps for AAA games. So I'm going to go see the Assassin's Creed people with their second screen smart Sweet. glass thing. So. And we'll see that on GameSpot.com then in a couple of hours. Absolutely. Write it up. Get your write-ups done. Awesome. <laughs> okay, boss. <laughs> I'm not his boss. Uh, speaking of Diablo, a new trailer out as well for that, so let's check it out. We are very happy to be joined by 22 Cans, Mr. Peter Molly. How are you doing, sir? Good, thank you very much. And how are you? you have a copy of uh, Goddess here yes, with you as well. Yes, we do. We have a copy of Goddess, and we're going to, you know, we're going to try and play it. Uh, so, yeah. when did you guys uh, drop into San Francisco? Yesterday. And Evening. is it is it a busy GDC as ever? Pretty busy. Yeah. Showing just, off. I've just come from a talk, where I was scheduled to do uh, a talk about going from <clears throat> indie from indie to corporate to indie. Yeah. But it ended up being a talk about desks. Why is that? Well, the because, size of desks, yeah. standing desks. <laughs> no, yeah, and uh, you know, I could see the GDC talk organisers going, "Oh shit, <laughs> 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 what have we scheduled?" Now, what my premise was, I had photographs of all the desks that I've ever had. Okay, from your and, yeah, line head days. And before. my premise was, the messier my desk, the more crazy and creative. It is, so I have them. My desk at the moment is the most messiest. When was the cleanest had. desk you had? That was Fable 3. Okay. It was, it was potted plant in the corner and a monitor, and that was it. You know, it was just beautiful, you know, simplicity. Yeah. Yeah. So are you, are you enjoying yourself? You've, you've obviously had, you know, you've gone from the, the, the days of Bullfrog and Lionhead mm. to being sort of, a, it's almost like attached to Microsoft mm. in terms of what they were making, mm. like large, big budget games. Mm. Obviously, with 22 Cans, you guys have decided mm. you've stepped back into perhaps like smaller teams, more creative endeavors. Yeah, How are you uh, feeling about it now that it's been a couple uh, of years? Well, you know, here's the thing is that um, for me, and this is, for, this is just me, mm. for me, when, uh, you know, when life is at its most dangerous and most risky and most unpredictable, I find that stimulates me creatively. And st I think it stimulates a team as well. And you, you know, as a small indie company, there's 20 of us, mm. and sometimes it feels like we're paddling this life raft with a big hole in the side. And now we're going to reach land before we all sink and and die. Perhaps a bit extreme. <laughs> um, uh, and and I find that's when the ideas really come. When yeah. it, when you when you can say to the, your team that we're doing something that's going to mean something to this industry there's going to be a you know a landmark and this is what i've been saying is that if we truly believe we can make something where that will make a difference yeah. in the world then then that is brilliant and that's 
hard to do when you're part of a big corporation. Where so you do you think it's easier to be that more creative or more innovative or more yeah, influential if you're yeah. on a smaller team? Yeah, well, because you're so much more nimble. Mm. You know, uh, I, I always think that big corporations are like super tankers. You know, it takes about it takes about you know an hour to turn a super yeah. tank around. But you know, it's like being in a little in a little. Um, Paddle boat. Paddle boat. Pedalo. A pedalo yeah. in game D. I was going to say conch for some reason. I don't even know what a conch is. Is it an Irish is it UK Oh, that, yeah. is it, is it called a I've been here too long, Peter. Yeah. I, yeah my my, my okay. Irish, I was, we had Irish, we had Paddy's Day yesterday and I could barely speak well, even you, a lick actually, of it. Actually, you, you, you must be in tatters after yesterday. Why would I be in tatters? Oh, oh. St. Patrick's Day. The, Wasn't it I'm putting on a brave face. Are you? Put it that way. Yeah. I've been celebrating all weekend <laughs> since we won the Six Nations, so oh, don't, really? don't worry about me whatsoever. And, and is that cricket or is it? Sorry? It's, it's Six Nations cricket or? Rugby. Oh, it's rugby. You're not a sportsman? You're too busy making video <laughs> yes, games. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Speaking oh, yeah, of... I can't be a sportsman and be a computer game. Takes too game. much time. Oh, takes too much time. Well, I can speak to you all day, but first of all, I yep. want to have a, a, yeah, a look at Goddess, shut obviously. The hell up. That's you... what you're saying. <laughs> and I think, actually, do you have a, a one of those dongles in your pocket oh, yeah. somewhere? I do. Can yes. We, uh, Fumbling around. Are you guys yeah, waiting for me to ask roll. that for like yeah. 20 minutes or something? Yeah, that's all right. right. I'm you just scream at me. I'm pleased to be here. That's a dongle in my pocket. Well, we have one back here, but it turned out to like not quite play. Play nice, and so we're gonna give this one a shot. Mm -hmm. I got the cable back here. So, so yeah, Goddess, this is you well. guys released um, Curiosity, yeah. the um, iPhone app, which then yes. sort of um, bestowed upon yeah, the, the winner uh, a, a life changing, yes. uh, which is yes. that he will be the first um, God of Gods. God of, of, of God Gods. Goddess. Yeah. This is we've heard about this game forever. We've, there was obviously a Kickstarter. You guys yeah. are on Steam Early Access yeah. as well, yeah. and now we're looking at the iPad version. Yeah. Um, so could just tell us, like, for people who maybe have not heard of it or have never played God games or don't know yeah. anything about Populous, okay. yeah. what is Goddess and what type of scale of game is this? Okay, now, um, this, is, uh, this is a God game. And, and the whole reason that I started this little company called 22 Cans was to reinvent what we all think of God games. Mm. Because for me, God games is this ability for you as a player to play in a world that gradually evolves around what you're like is you know it, and I, you know i can just see evil lurking behind <laughs> your eyes there um, like how always like, had the horns yes, in black and white exactly, put it that way there you go. and and um but it's more than that we what we've done we've been working very hard to give you a world which is infinitely moldable so jack is now just scrolling around with his fingers this version is on the iPad. Yeah. When we release it, it will be on the iPad, on the Mac, on the PC, on the iPhone. It will be doing the Linux the version as well, I remember. Linux yeah. version, well done. That's, that's good. I don't know <laughs> how many people will buy that? But they cover go. those bases. Um, exactly. Yeah, cover all the bases. Stretch goals, that's what they're there and, for. And so the first thing is, the most simple thing that you do is mold the land, mm. and the little people will actually react. So you can just see there, that what Jack's doing is moving his finger, he's tickling the land, caressing it. He's making love to the land. <laughs> All right, and, it's this type um, of video game, eh? It's yeah. very gentle and loving. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and in doing that, it's as he hands. does that, the, your little people, you only start out with two of them, will interpret what you're doing and will evolve around what that is. So he's just, he's just uh, molded the land and created this something called a plot. Now, if he taps on one of the houses, that simple. It's just a, one of these little people come out, and he will do what he wants to do. Now, okay. this is the whole spirit of the God game. It's less about telling person A to do thing B, and it's more about inspiring your people. Because what you're doing by inspiring your people is taking those people from the primitive age, and if we go to the timeline now, Jack, we take them from the primitive age all the way up to them conquering space, okay. retracing the entire history of humanity. Does your the, their relationship with you change throughout the game? Do they become Absolutely. more faithful, less faithful, yes, or do they, they find they you? Will, they will change. We have these things called commandments, where you say, you know, I think you should do this rather than that, um, and everybody's people is going to be different. That's the core of what the game is. But what is incredible about this is as you play, everybody who plays Goddess is connected to everybody else. Mm. We're all sculpting on this giant planet. And we're all nurturing our own little people on this giant planet. And after you've been playing for a few days, 
you'll meet another god, okay. another player. And after you've been playing a few more days, the two of you will meet other people until eventually you'll, you'll start realizing that it's not just you, it's not just your people, that you need to trade, you need to compete, you need to perhaps even go to war with other people, yeah. other human beings you're going to meet. So it's huge so what does, fast So what does that mean in terms of, does that mean that the, essentially <coughs> when the game launches, that weeks and months down the line, it, it's essentially a different type of game for the people who have played it? I, I, yes, in, indeed. I don't know, I don't really know how this is going to work out because we haven't yet turned on meeting other gods. That's going to happen in three weeks' time when we release uh, on limited access in April. Yeah, and that'll that's still be early access. Will no, that, that will be separate. on. Okay. Um, that'll be on iOS in New Zealand, Denmark, Ireland. You're just Sweden. going for like weird island nations no. and I guess yeah, the Danes it's, it's as well. All the all the countries that don't play uh, <laughs> rugby except Ireland. Okay. Because, yeah. Yeah. Um, and New Zealand, and New Zealand. who are the All Blacks, yeah. <laughs> the best rugby. Yeah, you're worry. right. Sports aren't your strong suit. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that's right. So we're, that's when we turn that on, and yeah. that's when it's going to be. What's going to be so fascinating is what people do when they meet each other, mm. because when they meet, are they going to be aggressive to each other? Are they going to try and trade and be nice to each other and we give we allow the flexibility for either of those things to happen is that a, a daunting experience that essentially the perhaps the the fun or entertainment that somebody might take out of the game is essentially out of your hands because for instance if, if people crafted these wonderful mm. uh, towns and they've got their their, their populations yeah. and whatnot and then somebody they meet introduces yes. war to yes. them and then and kills them off. Yes. How does that feel yeah, like? Yeah, a, a immediately you're going to the dark side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see you're there. It's Horn, a human nature, there. It's horns. Hard, yes, it's a horn. <laughs> now, with the, what we do is you, we've got, you've got something called home world. Now, mm. the, everything that you've seen so far in the game is all to do with that home world. And that is utterly safe from any, anything from the outside, mm. unless you decide that you want to invite people in. And I would just counsel you just to be very, very careful. Of who you invite in. Of who you right. invite in. Just like my mom used to tell me. It's yeah, good rules just for like life. Don't talk to strangers. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah, follow yeah. that one very often. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, and we, when, uh, when two gods or up to four gods meet, they meet in this place called, we call it a hub. And in this hub, they can do trading, they can do sculpting, they, they can introduce their people to each other, and they can go from this hub to another hub. Mm and they'll be doing more of that stuff. So you're s always safe in Homeworld unless you let people in. And at that point, you, um, you know, then those, those, those destructive things could happen. Because I, I just don't want people, firstly, I want people who have never played multiplayer games before to play this and feel secure and safe. Yeah. And feel like they, uh, and this is, uh, I could tell you about one feature, feel like that they're in a safe environment to do that. So. Bizarrely, what we learned from Curiosity, this app that we did about a this year was ago. for for folks who don't know, this was a, yeah. a a a cube that you tapped on layers on your phone and yeah. crowd like millions and thousands of people got involved yeah. in it, and yeah. eventually the individual who tapped the last cube yes. won um, a prize, which is uh, uh, some sort of financial stake in the, yeah. the game success, and then also they have the ability to to be the first god of this sort of yeah. Well, in fact, universe. Yeah, this chap called Brian, he's Scottish, and he gets. He gets um, every single cent we make mm. uh, from Goddess, he gets a small share of. And he has that, he earns that right for six months, mm. and then that right can be, he can be challenged by another human player okay. who's been playing Goddess, and, they, and if he's defeated, he then, he then gives up his crown and someone else takes it on. There is a, a narrative about uh, Peter Molyneux because you're such a, a character in the game's, um, in the game's world yeah. that often you could be um, guilty mm -hmm. of biting off more than you can chew or at least right. promising um, yes. uh, stuff that you, yeah. you couldn't deliver yeah. on. Yeah. Now that you're involved in this smaller team, do you feel like you're in more control of that or is this just a, a byproduct of you being so um, enjoying games so much that you want to bring all this stuff to Well, the I mean, th there's two issues here about the pro over-promising. Yes, I have definitely said things, and I've said them reasonably recently, mm. which haven't come to be true. And there's two reasons for that. One is I'm a terrible PR person. Okay. Is that I just, you know, you, this is what I'm like. 
you know, I, I, you know, I, I just, when I talk to the people in the press, I'll show something off and I'll say, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and yeah. we're going to do the other. And sometimes that wouldn't have been a fully implemented feature. In this particular case, all this is going live in three weeks' time, yeah. so I'd have to be an imbecile. To, to promise something that's not going to be in there. It's it not going to be in there in three weeks' time. But you're quite right, I have over-promised um, over uh, you know, a, a lot of times because I get so enthusiastic about the feature that I'm working on. And I, re you know, I, I just love what I do so much. And I love pushing the boundaries of what I think is, it, it should be possible. I mean, it, it, I, I think if the games industry was safe all the time, we wouldn't end up with games as diverse as Minecraft or Titanfall. Yeah. You need to be brave. And you, you know, even t something like Titanfall, you know, if you presented Titanfall to a lot of execs in the industry, oh, they would have said, oh, we've had Met Warrior games, they're not very popular. Yeah. It's the fact that you say, no, you know, every Met Warrior game you've seen before, it doesn't mean anything. So that bravery or that ambition is, you know, really, I think it has come to define what I love about this industry the most. So when we talk about Goddess, this is obviously in a, in a, in a genre of game that in many ways you sort of, you have the rights to. In, in so many of the pillars of the God game are either stuff that, well, you essentially yeah. perhaps started it with, with <coughs> populism and whatnot, and then yeah. we can talk about black and white. And uh, Does this wow. feel safe to you, or is this a dangerous type of game you're making? Because some people might think that this is quite a Peter Molyneux game to, mm. to, to, mm. to make. Well, I mean, there's, 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 there's two things about that. Firstly, I didn't, I didn't invent that genre. Mm. I, you know, I stumbled on acro across it. It was only my alcohol-soaked brain that came up with that idea. And you know, and then the the press turned around and said, "Oh, this is called a god game." And it wasn't. You know, I didn't set out to do it. As for for this, if goddess doesn't exist, there are going to be no god games left. Yeah. Why they, do you think that is? Well, because I think, firstly, I think God games are always problematic on consoles because of the interface. Because by definition, they're, they're worlds which you can interact with in a very freeform way. And bizarrely, controllers are, are awful for freeform worlds. Mm. You know, they're, they're very serial. And so that meant that there hasn't been the love and attention given to God games for quite some time. Secondly, there are a few games that have come out, like Farmville and Cityville and, and, and Clash of Clans, which have been kind of labelled, oh, well, they're god games. Yeah. I don't think they are god games, because they're not playful enough, they're not, more, they're not about your world, they're about this, you know, this very compartmentalised world. So I feel that Goddess should be a reinvention of that game, and then infusing that with the ability that all people are playing together is, is fresh and new and different enough so that um, it is brave. When we so, yes. It, it, it <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be great later when yeah. we ask you uh, 20 questions after the show and we're right. trying to get one word answers. Right. Be, no, yeah, no it's, yeah, an, it's an absolute yeah. pleasure to talk to you about this and, it's, no, and it's, it's incredibly interesting. Another part that I'm sort of interested in, I get to some user questions as well, and apologies okay. to the two boys over here who yeah. are just kind of sitting, yeah. enjoying the game, game on the iPad. Oh, this is totally learn. pleasant. I mean, I don't know if you guys, the folks at home have been <laughs> watching it, yes. and it's just mm. like the animations, you know, it, like it, you, they sort of channel that yeah. joy that you were saying. It, 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 the word is that I really want is, is delicious and delightful and relaxing, and, and the goddess. There are there is a mode we can take to you. You should show a voyage. Then sure. the, it is exciting. That is exciting. But the, I love games more and more, and I think you know my son the same. Is that you can kind of relax and immerse yourself. In yeah, it. and that's why I love one of the reasons I love Minecraft so much is because. You just want to lose yourself in the game, and just making it delicious and delightful, and mm. you know, and and musical and beautiful are all the things that adds to me caring about this world. And then when I start to put threat in, start to inject threat into that world, because the world means so much to you, because you've been relaxed in it, it means so much more. Yeah. When you, uh, when you design um, games now, do you, uh, yeah. is your son involved at all in any sort of way? Do you consider him when you're designing it, or does he give you pointers based on, based on what you, you show him? 
Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I think this is true of any parent, but I mean, a huge motivator of any parent, I think, is to is is to make your son or daughter proud. Proud, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it's an incredible motivator for me. I mean, I, I'm a sucker for this. I want my dog to be proud. Of <laughs> so, I mean, but uh, you know, to, 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 for him to turn around and say. And, and me to see him playing the game yeah. and enjoying the game means an incredible amount. And I don't know a parent that wouldn't wouldn't fall for that. So that is that is very instructive. What he is, and what a lot of a lot of children his age is, he's eleven years old. He is an incredibly harsh critic. Yeah, yeah. And and you know I've been on the verge. You know I've had to excuse myself from the room quite a few times if he's. Kind of says, you know, it's Dad, like the ultimate what, QA you know, tester. What, yeah, what's what's that bit? And then, you know, I break down in tears. <laughs> I was to have to run away. But yeah, it is very important. Yeah. Um, a lot of the games I feel that are sort of in that, uh, you know, if you excuse me to make a very loose definition, mm. but games like SimCity or like Theme mm. Park or mm. games where you're sort of you're 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 the I invisible think. hand in affecting a world yeah, and, and seeing yeah, the yeah, byproduct of it. Yeah. In recent years, most of these have been rehashes of older games, like we see SimCity, yes, and it's yes. it's you know it's largely indistinguishable from SimCity 3000 yeah, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So when you look at something like Goddess, are you replicating what's happened before, or how is this different to there, just creating yeah. another one of these types of games? Does it feel like something completely yeah. new? I, I, I mean, my bold claim is that there is nothing. And this is going to sound awful. Go for it. You're leading me down this path. <laughs> you want me to say this. I don't want you to say anything you don't want to say. That, uh, there is nothing like Goddess yeah. that I have ever played before. Uh, there, it, it's not like any game that has existed before. Part, partly because you have ultimate freedom, but also you have these temptations. You have this huge this thing called a long motivator, which no game that I've ever been involved with before. Mm. A long motivator is retrace the whole entire history of mankind. That's a that's a long motivator. Some games have attempted it, I guess, if you talk yeah, about the Age and, of Empires and, and, or and, Rise and, of Nations. And, or and Rise of Nations and, and more to the point is civilization. Yeah. And that, you know, but I felt that you, what you're doing here is something so delightful and so simple. You, after a while, you forget your retracing the entire history of humankind and you're just playing the game and just but then you realize of oh, course they've just invented paper yeah, yeah, yeah and there is a there is a delight to that so that's the first thing the second thing is that by making this game connect everybody who's playing together simultaneously at the same time we're all doing the same thing that has never been done before mm. that's why we did this crazy thing called curiosity because we weren't even sure it was possible to do that and then there's something absolutely fascinating that's going to happen and i can just see your the, your brain ticking away on the question <laughs> that you're going to what we're going to do is we're going to look at everybody's decisions who are playing goddess mm. And we're going to aggregate those decisions. Decisions such as such a, how I'll they give move you the land? This or? is a perfect example. In my GDC talk, I actually covered this. And someone came up after the talk, and she said, she said, I think your game is sexist. OK. Goddess is sexist. I said, why? She said, well, I noticed that all the little, um, uh, the, the little people who stayed at home and bred were women. OK. And I said, well, yeah. Same could be said of black and white as, as well. It, it, the the yeah, farmers same, were men. And yeah, the, the yeah. But we have it's these not. things in the game called commandments. And one of the commandments, it comes up, and, I, and the little people ask for your decision. And the decision is, should women stay at home and work? OK. Or should they, you know, should they stay at home and look after the men, or should they go out to work? Yeah. And you have a choice of whether you say, no, they should go out to work or not. We're going to aggregate the entire everybody who makes that decision, all the millions of people who play. We're going to aggregate that and say empirically, yeah. okay, of all these people that play, this number of them believe that women should stay at home, and this number of believe that should, and that becomes a entire commandment for all the uh, for all the. Oh, oh man, so you're going is, to answer the question if gamers yeah. are misogynist or not, yes, finally. We're going to answer every, <laughs> every moral question that has plagued mankind since the birth of civilization. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're just, that's a now you're just playing that's up to it. That's a promise that, 
<laughs> good uh, you're gonna get yeah. awesome peter Molyu, thank you so much no, for coming no, on and uh, showing yeah. us goddess and for talking it's an absolute pleasure yeah, um, yeah. i've got some housekeeping to do Great. but i, but I nice. think you, i think you can help me well, out you've here you've answered that commandment already haven't you if you've got a housekeeping to do. <laughs> <All right. laughs> let's not get into that one. Yeah. Uh, we've got some winners of a competition i have to name out people on twitter all the time all and right. it's the absolute worst because these people have the craziest usernames in the oh, world okay. so do you mind just like listing out those five no, people I, who've won? Uh, no not at all go um, for it these people I, have won. I am i am dyslexic so okay so this could end up with completely opposite. different people who have won all right so, we can do it together we can do it together right, at mr jono perfect at mr don cabista yeah don cabasa don cabasta at mc Connelly, Lady Jelly, Dealy, Flu, Badar. Perfect. 98. 98, yeah. And at Mati777. Perfect. Which is the nut. This is suspicious because that <laughs> is the make of the aircraft that's gone missing. Oh, you, th oh, you think? It could be from someone on board. Talk about bold claims, <laughs> Peter Monolith. <Montague. laughs> Uh, Jason Bassett, Bass, Bassant, Bassant, Bassant yeah. yeah, he might yeah, be a, a sort of French sounding surname, what, what much like win? yourself. What they won uh, beta keys for Strife, um, so uh, yeah. they can play awesome. that. It's okay. a it's a free to play MOBA video game. Nice. Talk about the the length and breadth of video games. Yeah. Uh, also, I want to remind folks if they want to win a copy of Infamous Second Son on a PlayStation Four, to go to the link on screen now uh, and fill in the details, and uh, you can win one of those bad boys. What are you doing for the rest of your time in San Francisco and for GDC? Well, is this, a, mean, is this work or pleasure? Do you get to see a bit of the city, enjoy it? You know, it, it's it's pleasure. I don't see any of the city. I just I will be locked away in a hotel room, and I will meet press. Presumably people. meeting press. Yeah. Meeting okay. Press, not, not just getting no dr yeah. drinking tiny bottles of no, vodka for no, for twenty hours straight. Sadly not. All I've right. done that already. <laughs> That's, that's done. <laughs> awesome. Peter Molly, thank you very much thank for hanging out. I appreciate it. Great. Shane, thank you, sir. Thank you. Chris Waters, I'm going to shake your hand as well. Sure, just for Danny, thanks for hosting the lobby one. with I'll me. I'll take one of those. One more time. We're going to take it home. We've got the uh, review of Metal Gear Solid Grand Zeroes after the credits, so stick around for that. And of course, we'll be back right here on the lobby, 2 p.m. Pacific time on next Tuesday for some more video games. You all have a great week. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Lawfela Porik, Makara, and we'll talk to you next week. Take care.